With the release of AMD's new Zen 2 CPUs, there's also a new chipset being released too, the X570. And today we got on review the ASRock Tai Chi X570. And typically the Tai Chi series of motherboards has delivered that very solid VRM solution, as well as having solid onboard audio and everything else also checking out without breaking the bank too much. Though as always with a tech, yes, city review, we're gonna be taking this board through all those paces, then giving you guys the verdict on whether this thing is worth your hard earned or not. Let's get on with it. Welcome back to the Yes of the Tech City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with the VRM details straight away. We've got a 14 phase solution with two of those being dedicated to the SOC, 12 of those being dedicated to the CPU, and they are doubled via the ISL 6617A. And then for the controller, they're using the ISL 69147. And for the MOSFETs, we've got direct drive MOSFETs from Vichy. These are the SIC 634 and 632A for the high and low sides, rated at 50 amps. And then for the chokes, we've got SMD chokes, 50 amp solutions. And then on the capacitors, 12K Nichicon caps to make overall a very solid VRM. For when I tested this with the 3900X of 4.3 gigahertz all core overclock, the heatsink was only showing 51 degrees C in a 22C environment with the VRM coming with 57 degrees on the MOSFETs itself. So this thing is running very cool and you won't have to worry about anything and not have to worry about having active cooling on this VRM either. And of course it will be geared up to the 3950X when that 16 core solution is released. And they also require the CPU power pin outlay with eight plus four pin. So overall, a very solid implementation of the VRM from ASRock and the heatsink covering those chips weighs in at roughly 236 grams. Though moving over to the onboard audio, which is always an important thing, especially if you're buying a high-end board and you wanna run good audio, we've got the Crosstor coming in with levels of minus 86 dB, which is very good. Though keep in mind, this does have the crosstalk problem with a volume level of 91 or higher having leakage in the right channel. So basically if you want to use this with headphones or speakers, then just leave the volume level at 90 or below and it will be exceptional as the frequency response curve showed only a negative two dB drop off at 20 Hertz and below. So the Realtek 1220 codec that they've implemented here is pretty solid, but also everything else in the rest of the circuitry line, the caps and the amp, are also phenomenal too. And speaking of the mic import, that's an important thing if you wanna get into streaming or you just want your mates to hear you clearly while you're gaming. When I did the test, there was absolutely no noise coming in and the blips when I changed the volume levels indicated that noise suppression was being used, but it was only very slight. So you will be able to use this if you wanna get into streaming and then if you need to get better gear and you know you're that good, then you, of course you can always upgrade your audio gear later. But overall, fantastic implementation of onboard audio for ASRock. And another thing I noticed too was the channel balance between the left and right speakers was near perfect out of the box. Now, another thing with the X570 chipset is the introduction of PCIe Gen 4.0. All the PCIe lanes on the bottom, including the NVMe solutions, which is four by four, you get three of those, is covered by a massive heatsink coming in at 233 grams and actually features a small fan on the bottom, which is actively powered. And this is covering the platform chipset hub too. Now I did test out an NVMe drive here, the PCIe 4.0 Aorus, and the speeds were absolutely phenomenal on the read and write sides. The heatsink did a phenomenal job of cooling too, coming in with a 51 degree software reading during a stress test. And then the surface temps really only just broke that of 45 degrees when I used the IR camera to measure the temperatures. So this heatsink and this solution implemented by ASRock is doing a great job of cooling and keeping things quiet too. Now besides that, there is five standard PCIe 4.0 slots, two of those being 1X, three of those being 16X, and this does include support for NVIDIA NVLink Quad SLI or three-way AMD Crossfire. The PCIe 16X slots all include the steel armor if you want to start bending graphics cards while you are playing games. Now usually Thunderbolt is reserved for Intel's side of things, especially their higher end motherboards. But in this case, there's the option on the X570 Taichi to add a Thunderbolt add-in card too. Moving over to the back of the board, there is your BIOS flashback button, which is a feature I believe implemented on all X570 motherboards. You've got Wi-Fi 6, and when testing out those speeds, they checked out fine here in the studio. And then for the NIC, you've got an Intel 211, and testing out those speeds was consistent as well. They've also implemented a clear CMOS button on the back, as well as a HDMI 
port if you wish to use an APU. There's a hybrid mouse keyboard PS2, six USB 3.2 Gen 1 slots, and a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A and Type C, as well as optical out and manual 5.1 support on your audio. To top off all that, I tested out the USB 3 speeds on the back and they were all consistent throughout all the ports. As for the main area of the motherboard and input output connectivity, you've got eight SATA 3 ports, a USB Type C out, USB 3.2 Gen 1 out, and also four USB 2.0 outs, as well as having a power and reset button down the bottom, and besides that, having a Dr. Debug LED, and having both five volt addressable RGB and 12 volt headers, to which the RGB color scheme can be controlled within the BIOS itself via the polychrome feature. And it's got 13 different patterns to choose from, speed, also intensity, and the color spectrum. So you can manually control this if you wish to. And there's also RGB underneath the board, as well as having it on the bottom platform chipset heatsink and up the top of the board to the left of the VRM. So three zones included. And of course you can customize it all together without having to install software in Windows, which in the past, I'll put the link up here for a video where we've tested RGB software, which some of the software can pull your CPU, especially if it's active software in Windows, and that can cause a performance hit. But it's great to see that ASRock's solution is not this, it's from the BIOS, so it won't be polling your CPU whatsoever, which means you'll have RGB control and no software performance hits. And of course, if you're getting an X570 motherboard, I'm sure you wanna know how the BIOS looks and feels. This is going with ASRock's typical solution that they've used over the past few years, and there's nothing that needs to be changed. It's got all the features you'd want for enthusiast era water overclocking. You're able to save five different profiles, as well as update the BIOS easily. There's the fantastic tuning control where you can control each of the individual fan headers themselves to make custom profiles, or just set silent or standard or full speed if that's your kind of thing. There's also basic and advanced mode and if you want to overclock the 3900X for example, then that's super easy to do to get to 4.3 gigahertz like I've done here today. Basically in regards to ASRock's BIOS, I think they like to follow that old saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And there's nothing that needs to be fixed on this BIOS. And so all this testing now brings us to conclusion time with the X570 Taichi. And it does come in with a steep asking price of 300 USD, or if you're in Australia, 500 AUD. And at this price point, they have done pretty much everything right. I think the implementation of the VRM, the heat sinks, all the extra feature sets from the expandability on the PCIe Gen 4.0 to the Wi-Fi 6, to the Intel NIC, to the USB 3 ports at the back, USB front out, BIOS, RGB, it all checks out and it all works phenomenally well and very consistent. Something that you need at this price point is stability and this BIOS and also ASRock's implementation certainly does hit that mark, at least from all the testing I've done here today. The one thing I will point out, the only critiquing point is that onboard audio, if you're gonna use it, and you're gonna use it hard, then definitely keep that volume level at 90 or below for the best experience. I'd like to see them fix that because I have seen them fix it on some of the Intel boards that I've tested recently here. So maybe getting that fixed in a future iteration would mean that you can just raise the volume completely to 100 and still get that really good experience on their Purity Sound 4 solution. Though speaking of the 3900X and overclocking on this VRM and the BIOS, it was just easy peasy for 4.3 gigahertz overclock. That's going to expand over to the 3950X 16 core solution. Though one thing you do have to keep in mind with this motherboard is that it does have PCIe 4.0 and you are going to be paying for that. So if you can't utilize that just yet, and I actually don't know many people that could utilize PCIe 4.0 just yet, then you are gonna be paying money for something that I don't feel a lot of people are gonna use just yet. But at least on that note, it is going to be one of those future-proof boards that will last you for years and years to come, as long as AMD keep using AM4. Also with the X570 motherboards, you do get Precision Boost Overdrive 2 support. And when I've tested that here on both the Aorus and also the ASRock boards, it's worked phenomenally well to the point where it's pretty much maxing out a custom overclock without you having to do any work. So if you've got a bit of money and you wanna get a 3900X or even a 3700X or the 3950X when that comes out and you're not really into overclocking but you want the most performance possible, then getting an X570 board will ensure that you get a really good level of performance that you otherwise wouldn't get out of a B450 or an X470 for example. And with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us and also let us know in the comments section below what you think of the X570 Taichi. And if you've got any requests for reviews on the AMD X570 lineup, then be sure to let us know as well. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. But if you are enjoying the content enough, sub button, ring the bell, it's down there, and I'll see you in the next one. 
Peace out for now. Bye.